QuickBase tutorial how to use QuickBase. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll show you guys how you can get started with QuickBase and their recently integrated AI features. This can help you in managing your time better and setting more goals for your business or your projects. So let's get into it. Now to get started, simply head on over to quickbase.com and click on start free trial over here. You can get a free trial on QuickBase. However, keep in mind that if you are ever looking to get started with QuickBase, you do have to subscribe to a plan. So you can subscribe to their team plan starting at $35 per user per month, where you get template libraries, personalized dashboards, and more. And you also have the business plan starting at $55 per user per month, where you have other features all including the basic features as well as gantt chart sandbox and point solution workflows so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to log on to our account over here that i have already created just by entering your email address and once you enter your email address you can just go on ahead enter your password and then just click on sign in or sign up now once you sign up this is going to be the screen that you see as well so you're going to have a my app section on the top left you have a pipeline section that will open up your pipeline specifically on quickbase then you have your exchange beta section so this is a beta testing section that they have currently created where you can find pre-existing templates that can help you in building on quickbase now Let's go back into the my app section and once we go into the my app section you guys can see currently it's going to be empty but we're going to get started with building so we're going to click on create new application over here now you have four options you can start from scratch and create your own tables and workflows you can import a spreadsheet you can import from a lucid chart or you can use the smart ai builder now, if you take a look at your pipelines over here, or if you take a look at the exchange beta, you can always get started with a template if you find that easier for you. So you guys can see there are a few templates available. You have the project management starter, data analyzer, CRM, time cards, ticket starter, project inventory starter app, a job candidate tracking, status spotlight, project site assessment, and more. So for all of the basic categories that you think of you do have some pre-existing ones which can help you in building your own now let's first take a look at their pre-existing project management template and then i'll show you guys how you can build one on your own so this is the project management starter app and we're going to click on install and then we're just going to rename this to 101 and then i'm going to click on install over here now on quickbase for most people, a lot of people find the name of app confusing. By app, they just mean a workflow or a workspace. It's really the same thing as you would be using on any other project management tool. So once we have created our app, we can open up the particular dashboard for this app. Now, you guys can see this is our one-on-one -on -one app and on the bottom, you have your home page. Then you're going to have a user's page. Then you have your project section within your app and then you have tasks and table section now you guys can see this has divided tables into two formats so you have projects and then within your projects you have tasks with each task you can add them to a particular project and if i click on this particular project over here you guys can see the number of tasks and then if i click on the number of tasks this will automatically open up the task section so let's say even within tasks i want to add a subtask section so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up tasks over here and you guys can see all of the information is added so let's say i have this one over here let's say i want to edit it so you can click on the pencil icon and it's going to open up the entire form now you guys can see the task overview the status the dates the notes that are attached and on the top right you have normal spacing relaxed spacing condensed spacing and then your project info now it is currently also present in reports and charts and we also have a predecessor to our particular task now if i click on create new table and let's say i want to use a i'm going to start from scratch and i'll make it into sub tasks over here like this now once i do that you can use any icon that you want and then you can add any single line record so and then I'm just going to click on create table. Now in this new table, we can begin customizing the fields that are required. So for us, it's going to be subtask and then text. And then after that, I want to add a new label. 
or let's say we want to have the history notes issues and then predecessors so i'm going to click on predecessors and i want to make sure that the predecessor is always a task so it could be text multi-line text numeric data and then we have advanced so i want to select the predecessor over here then i have the status and the status can be you know multi-line and that is around it i don't think i want any more fields over here and you can even add formulas you can add user formulas text rich formulas let's say i have a formula which is a multi-select formula and i can just click on add fields over here now once you add your field in your section you can enter the choices for each of the fields so for our status field let's say i have in progress or in progress and then we can add completed doc like this and then i want to sort this field in the order shown above and i don't want them to be alphabetical and then i want to click on next over here now once you do that you will be able to see these are going to be your basic fields now once you create your fields you will see on the left you have your table structure so you can click on structure over here to be able to see the visual builder element now on your subtask you have all of these fields then you guys will be able to see how these two structures are linked now what I'm going to do is I'm going to condense this like this, place it over here, and then you guys can see how a relationship. So what you're going to do is you can also copy this relationship over here. So if we take a look at over here, we can build a table to table relationship and I want to link subtasks connected to tasks. Now I don't want the relationship to be built like this, so I'm going to actually go into tasks and then we can see over here. That task should be above subtask like this and I'm going to click on create relationship and just like that now our relationship has been built. Now in the predecessor field we can choose the type of predecessor that we want as well. Now once we have saved our changes we can click on exit over here to go back into our subtask board. Now this is our subtask board as we have set up. This is the subtask, predecessor and status. Now you can choose the style you want to use in your Airtable format. So we're going to start creating records in our subtasks so we're going to create our first subtask which might be contact bank like this and then you can choose a predecessor and you can click on create task to choose the type of predecessors now you guys can see that the predecessors are currently not linked so we will have to change this option later on and then you can choose the status let's say it's in progress and you can add a related task so let's say this is like the related task and i can click on save over here now if i go into my actual subtask field you guys will see we have all of our information now I'm going to change this field property of our predecessors and let's say I want to change the type of data that is shown and then I want it to be file attachments, numeric data and I want this to actually be formula, multi-select, workday. Now I'll have to change the type of this particular field. So we're going to exit our settings and we can actually add a different field to make it easier. So we can click on all go into our tasks and you guys can see in progress of tasks settings and then once we go into our table settings we can you know further edit the form structure access as well so we're going to click on fields on the left panel over here and click on a new and then let's say i want to build a new field which is going to be based upon it's going to be based upon work date or report link or i think i want to go with the formula and i want the formula to be checkbox the checkbox formula like this and then we can click on add fields and then if we go back into 101 we can check off the task that has been completed in our formula section we're going to click on exit over here and you guys can see in our pre section over here we have the contact by predecessors and then this can be checked off if this particular task links to that particular checkbox. So in this way you can get started with QuickBase. It's a very detailed platform and if you're someone that does not have a lot of experience in building with QuickBase, it might feel like it's a bit difficult to understand. However, the density of data that you can store and the type of customization that you can build can be super helpful with this type of tool and you can't really find this kind of detail with other tools so i hope you guys found this video helpful if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe